Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of the Kokomo Bobcats Bobcast. And this is a new podcast we're doing here at the Kokomo Bobcast. My name is Drew Larrison uh, from the Kokomo Post here in Kokomo. And with me is the head coach of the Bobcats, Cliff Levingston. Coach, welcome. This is a new thing we're doing. We're all really excited to be here. You're excited. I've, I've been waiting all year to get this podcast going, the Bobcast. And it's been uh, um, something that I, I've, I've wanted to do, but didn't really know how to do it until you guys came about. Yeah, it's and it's I a lot. To, I, just want, I just want to say thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. No, you're welcome. The you know we're happy to be here. Happy, happy to happy to help. Um, you know I do a show with the uh, the mayor of the city of Kokomo as well. So now I'm like the two most important men in Kokomo. I feel like I've got a show <laughs> with them. So it's it's great to be here. Great to be. And I will mention. Um, obviously we're not like in a studio. Uh, we're not in some recording area. We're at Cook McDougal's Cook in downtown McDougal's. Kokomo, and that is because they're a partner of the Kokomo Bobcats. So every week we'll be recording here at Cook McDougal's, which is great, you know, because we carried a bunch of equipment here and luckily our office is just right down the street. So it's it's not too big of a deal. It's nice. This, this is the Bobcast headquarters. That's right. Headquarters. We, need, we need some signage. Headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this is the Bobcast, and this what it is, is let's talk about what this show is going to be, you know, so the Bo Kokomo Bobcats, it's their first season in Kokomo, it's off to an unbelievable start in so many different ways, you know, not only are um, the citizens of Kokomo loving the Bobcats basketball, but I mean, we're also first in our division. We'll talk about it later, but we're going to be ranked number one in our division for the playoffs. So, I mean, the team is doing extremely well, too. Um, but let's talk about why we're doing this show. You said you've been excited about this for a while. What are you most excited about for the Bobcast? Well, you know, just getting the name and, and, and getting the players uh, recognition in the city, uh, letting the people know that, you know, this is a professional basketball team, and we are about – the first in everything. We do first, the first in the division. We want to win our first championship. It's the first team, the first basket that ever made, professional basket uh, made in, in Kokomo. It's, yeah. It's, it's fitting. Kokomo, the city of first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so this show, I guess the agenda of every show we're going to do, you know, we're going to talk about last week's games. Yes. We're going to talk about the get the, the games coming up. And then we're also going to talk about, you know, just Kokomo in general. Cause Cliff, you, you're obviously not from Kokomo. No, no, no. And we'll no. talk a little bit about like your past and your career a little bit, but I mean, you're not from Kokomo, but you love Kokomo. You've really fell in love with the town. You live here now. I mean, tell us a little bit why you love Kokomo and why you've decided to make this your home. Well, you know, what I like about Kokomo is the warmth I've received from the people. Um, the first day I came here, I was skeptical about coming to Kokomo. I'm like, uh, I don't know if I really want to be here. And I don't know if I really want to go back into coaching. But when I got here, I saw the enthusiasm. Uh, I, I felt the, the people who were really involved in the project, they were invested in it wholeheartedly. Uh, um, Jeff Beeler and Mark Jansen the two owners of the, of the Bobcats. Then I met the mayor. The mayor was on board. The city yeah. uh, planner was on Everyone was on board. And yeah. more importantly, the community wanted something to call their own again. So that's why I was excited about it. Yeah. We really are a sports town. I really believe that in Kokomo. You know, we, we have the Kokomo Bobcats now. We're some food we're going to be trying later. Ooh, so that's ooh, exciting ooh. to see. Uh, thanks, Sean, from Coke McDougal's there. You know, we have the Bobcats now. We have the Kokomo Jackrabbits as well. Like, huge baseball town. People love Kokomo, love baseball. We love basketball being in Indiana. Basketball just hits different in this state. People love basketball in Indiana. So that's, I mean, welcome to Kokomo. I know you've been here for a while, but it's, it's really cool to see, and I, I know I'm not alone in this, to see a coach not only just, you know, it's not just a job for you in Kokomo. It's really something that you're loving being a part of the community here in Kokomo. Me, I mean, I'm born and raised here. I've okay. lived okay. almost every single day of my life. I've <laughs> called Kokomo home. I went away for one year, um, and I came back. You know, he was so, homesick. He was homesick. Mama, yeah. I'm coming home. I'm yeah. coming home, mama. Yeah, it's something to do with that. It's also like you got to pass <laughs> classes in college, and if you don't, they send you back home, too. So, I mean, yeah, but I was homesick. That's what it was. No, so, I mean, it, it's cool to see that. And, you know, I ask people a lot, you know, newcomers to Kokomo, what do you love about Kokomo? And almost 100% of the time, the answer is the people. You, you know, know it, and, it, and that's it's way more than just uh, me coming and coaching a team. I have to be invested in, in the community. And, and one thing I can say, this community has accepted us as basketball players coming from somewhere else 
and, 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 and making us feel part of the, the community in the city. And, you know, when, when I put together a team, I don't want to just put together a team of basketball players who just come, show their faces, sure. and leave. I want guys who enjoy being in the community, enjoy going to see kids, enjoy going to see uh, uh, fans at, at, at different places. That's what makes uh, this team so special because we, we have a lot of guys who basically the fans have uh, uh, been won over because of their personalities and their involvement with the community. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's true. And you see that, you know, the players are more involved in the community. Like you said, they go to schools and meet kids or they stick around after the games and shoot, you know, baskets with kids. That works out well for the team, too, because those those fans are going to want to come back because they're so much more invested in a team that is interactive with them rather than a team they just see play on the court. Well, so, I mean, yeah. it, it works such well, so well in both ways. It, it, it makes it makes guys feel good when they walk down the street and the kids say, hey, that's fudge. Yeah, hey, that's hawk. That's duck. You know, that shows that you are really Making an uh, making impact, an impact yeah. in that community. And, th and that's what it's about, making an impact in the community. Absolutely. So, yeah, this show is going to be fun. We're going to do this as long as we can. Uh, the the Kokomo Bobcast is, is what we're calling. I hope you like our play on words there. But let's get into it. Let's talk about last week's games. Uh, last week went, weekend, we split the games. We won one. We lost one. The first game uh, was with the Columbus Condors, who's a team in our division. We won that one 122 to 106. And one of the best parts about that game, we played well, you know, scored a lot of points and went well. But we clinched. That's the game we clinched the number one seed in the playoffs. So that was a great game um, overall. But we clinched that number one seed, which was what I was saying. This is the first year for this team. No one knew what the Bobcats were going to be like. We didn't know if it was just going to be a team. We didn't know if they were going to be good or they're going to be great. We won the number one seed in the playoffs our first year. So that's a great thing to see. Well, you know, that, that was one of the, the, the things that I've always wanted to do. When I came to this team at the press conference, I said, Mr. Magley, don't be surprised if you're back here handing us a trophy for our first year in the league. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. But, oh, my gosh. Oh! There's only two of us, Sean. Man. Oh, my gosh. Sean, Sean you, you make tapes, Sean. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I may have to go home with you tonight. <laughs> but, uh, right. but, no, you know, it, it, was, it was something that I wanted to be, make sure we were the, uh, I would say, the, 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 the cornerstone the benchmark of what professional sports is going to be like yeah and that's what we we set out to do and that's what we've done all year long yeah uh everyone now is is looking trying to match up to our standards of what and how to build a team sure from the ground up and we've we've built this team from the ground up because like i said there was nothing here before and now we have something special and everyone is trying to emulate what we're doing I'll say that too. And there, that's so true. And not just the team ways, but like I said, Kokomo is a sports town, man. And these players, the community, the media, we have some of the best media for the Kokomo Bobcats, oh, the best gosh. fan support in any other league. I bought the, the pass, the TV pass where I can watch the away games. Right. And a lot of these other gyms you're playing in, they're like rec centers. Well, they're yeah, YMCA's. Yeah. And we have a 5,000-person stadium <laughs> here in Kokomo that gets a lot of people to come. Well, you know, and, and that's, that's why we, we said we want to be the benchmark of the league. We want the standards of the league to go up. Um, when, when, when Jeff and Mark came, about, came on board, it was basically, okay, we can, we can make this team good, but we can make it great. We can make the league better if we make sure we raise our standards of what you sure. expected. Now, other teams next year is going to have to change their venues, yeah. go up to a nicer venue, spend a little bit more money to be um, like us. And that's a good thing because now it's a, it, it starts becoming a product that's evenly yeah. across the across yeah. the. I mean, it's good for you know the, the team too because you're going to want players to come here. You know, well, they right want to play right now. All the, all the players have come through here. They want to come play for us. So. Exactly. I mean, so, and I'll say this too. Um, the Kokomo Jackrabbits, the same thing. The stadium they play in downtown is easily one of the best stadiums in that Northwoods league that they play in. A lot of other teams, they play at a, ba a high school field, right. which is small. And like, you know, it's, it's Kokomo's got some amazing sports venues and we earn them because people come out and watch the games. Well, it's, it's not just, it's not just come watch the game. They support. Oh yeah. The teams yeah and without support you have nothing and you know coming out spending your money 
you're buying the merchandise, watching the TV telecast. That right there is the total support it's a big that we difference. have. I yeah. mean, it's, it's a big difference. And Kokomo is it's a unique city. I, I didn't I didn't realize how unique Kokomo was until I've gotten here and gotten into the community. It is when, we, they, when they're behind you, yeah. they are one hundred. We're a loyal behind. city. It, yeah, it's it's almost it's like it's like a mini Chicago. I mean, the, the Cubs hadn't won in years, and they still sold out every game. It's like, sure. how can you yeah. go to a game and they ain't winning? But the loyalty and they they the appreciation of the fans and good uh, good sports teams, they're they're one hundred percent behind. Yeah, it's it's real. So this game uh, last weekend with the Columbus Condors, we won one twenty two to one hundred six. I've got my stats here. Yeah. Uh, Fudge <laughs> came in the leading scorer for that game. Love that guy. Love to see him do well. He had twenty five points. Points, 11 rebounds, so came, walked away with a double-double. Hawk, everybody loves Hawk, 18 points, 9 boards. And Duck had 17 points, 3 rebounds, and 3 assists. So very spread out. you know. And those three guys, they've been here the longest. Yes, um, yes, you know, yeah. And they really have, tell me if I'm wrong, but have really slipped into they're the leaders of this team. They're pushing people along well. Well, you know, uh, I, I didn't really want a big turn, turnaround on this team. You know, uh, guys coming and going. I wanted to. Get me a, a, a solid core a family. Of guys. Yeah, solid core guys, and and with Fudge, uh, Hawk, Duck, Trey, um, you know these guys have been the, the the center piece of this team, and you know guys have people have gravitated to them because they have personality. Yeah, you know, on and off the floor, on the floor, I mean they play well together. It's it's like a family. They they look out for each other, make sure that each other's uh, uh, backside is covered. And it's that's what this is all about. You know, we we have a, a balanced team. Yeah, we don't have just one or two scores. We have about ten scores on our mm-hmm. team. So any given night, any guy can get hot. It's true. And 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 beat our lead sco- leading score. So that's and it's unselfish. And, yeah. and these guys really care for each other. They they want each other to do well. It's not one guy one for himself. It's about them sharing the, 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 the limelight. And that's, yeah. that's, that's the best part. Which of is it. good, you know, cause we had Gino was a part of the team earlier in the league, in the season and he left to do other things. Wish him the best. Hope your career goes great. He was definitely the leading scorer almost every single night when he was here. And as he left, we, it really is spread out. Like we've, we really, as you're saying, there are 10 guys on the team that can go off any single night, but then you've got tons of guys in double digits every single night. It's spread out. Well, you know, and, and with, with Gino leaving, you know, I, I told guys, we have to make up those points by committee. Yeah. It can't be just one guy trying to step up and, and, and fill those shoes. It's got to be a committee of us. And that's what we've done. Guys have stepped up their roles, understood what's needed be to, for us to win, whether it's rebounding, whether it's uh, assists, scoring the basketball, uh, defensive uh, uh, stops. These guys have stepped up to the challenge, and that's why we are where we are. We're number one in the in the uh, the whole TBL and def- defensive stops. So wow, that's that's a test to guys that going every day at practice hard at each other, sure, stopping each other. Because I mean, I, I tell these guys in practice, if you know your own team's plays and you and you're still scoring, just think what it's like when you got to go to a, a, a fa- when a team got to face us and try to stop us. Sure. It's going to be hard. Yeah. Now, we know how to stop other teams, but other teams can't stop us. Yeah, and, you know, the old uh, phrase goes, defense wins championships. So go. we'll see how that goes. That's a good <laughs> That's a good stat column to be at the top of, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that game went well. Uh, Columbus Condors, we're going to talk about in a minute, but that's probably who we're going to be playing first round of the playoffs as well because they're fourth in the Midwest region as of right now. Well, they, they beat us the game before at home. That was our first home loss, very first home loss, and it didn't sit well with the guys. Yeah, as it should have. Guys, guys really took that personal and took that to heart. So the next time we played them, we said we got to make sure we come and play them and, and play them well and, and send a message to them. And the message today they, they, they received is it ain't going to be a cakewalk. And they they chose, they wanted to play us. They kept saying, well, we'd rather play y'all than anybody in the league. All I can say is be careful what you ask for. <laughs> careful what you wish for, for sure. Yeah, so that was the the first weekend, uh, the game of the weekend. Like I said, we won that 122 to 106. And then on Sunday, we uh, played the Owensboro Thoroughbreds, and that actually ended up being a loss. The close game, 123 to 119. Hawk was the leading scorer of that game with 21 points, 11 rebounds, so he walked away with a double-double. Jonathan Lloyd, a newer player on the team, he walked away with 19 points and three boards. And Patty, my guy Patty, 18 points and six rebounds. 
rebounds in the loss to Owensboro Thoroughbreds. And they're also in our, our division as well. So they're a tough team. Midwest is tough in general. We really do have a tough division. Uh, but tell us what went, went wrong, what went well in that game, uh, in that loss against Owensboro. Well, honestly, we played a great game. Uh, I, I, after the game, I couldn't say too much about how we played. It was a lack of defensive stops. I mean, they shot 63 Point six percent from the three point line. Yeah, but we were only down by two with the ball. Yeah, so we played. They had to do everything perfect to win that game, and they did everything absolutely perfect. Can they do it again? I don't think so. Yeah, because we I, might end up meeting them in the playoffs too. We might yeah. end up meeting, meeting them to play. We beat them with uh, points off of turnovers. We beat them in points in the paint. We were second. Uh, we beat them in second chance points. We beat them in fast break points. We beat them bench points. If you look at the stat sheet, we won that game wholeheartedly, hands down. But uh, numbers-wise, at the end, they got us at the end because they put up one, one or two baskets more in, in, in the bucket than we did. I, I, like I said, I'm wholeheartedly, I was happy about that game because we defended them well. They hit some shots with hands in their face, guys guarding them. It was, it was unbelievable. It's just one of those nights, yeah. It was yeah. nights, so yeah. it was their night. But um, we, we've we, had those we're, nights. We're, yeah, we've had those <laughs> yeah, nights. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we had a night in Vegas like that. We On the stat sheet, they outplayed us, but at the end, we beat them at the end. But Points matter the most. I'm, I'm, yeah. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just excited about the playoffs. I'm I just yeah. ready for the playoffs. The regular season is great. The regular season, is, 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 is to me, is a, is a preseason for the playoffs. Playoffs is the actual <laughs> season. Yeah. Yes, because you, you can go undefeated in the regular season, lose the first round of playoffs. Everyone forgets about yeah, what sure. What happened during the, during the regular season? Well, before the playoffs, we do have two more games on the schedule, yes. and that's this weekend. Both are at home. Uh, one is against Flint United. That's Friday night's game, June 25th, against Flint. Flint overall is 5-16 and 16 on the season, and we are 2-0 and 0 against Flint on the season. And then Sunday, the June 27th, against Owensboro Thoroughbreds once again. Uh, they're 15-7 and 7 on the season, and we're 2-1 and 1 on the season against them, the one loss being last weekend. So let's talk about the Flint United game. Um, obviously, they don't have the strongest of teams in the league. We've been able to handle them. We actually, I think they were the first game of the very, season. Yeah, very first game. They of were the season. first game it, of the it season. Was it was game. close. It was ninety-two, ninety. I think yes, is what the was. score it was. was. Yeah. Um, I saw that today when I was researching for all of this. But other than that, we've kind of handled them well. Like I said, they got a five and sixteen record. They're not one of the strongest teams in the league. Um, but any any notes on that game that we should be watching for? Oh yeah, they have some dangerous players on that team. Um, some some guys who can really put the ball in the basket and. Uh, they have a couple of uh, defensive players. So we can't take that game lightly. We have to make sure we stay on our P's and Q's and do the things we need to do to win that ball game. Uh, from from the, our offensive sets, getting in our offensive sets a little bit faster, running them more proficiently, and defensively understanding who scores are and who the, um, who the shooters are and get to them. We got to close out on the shooters and run them off the three-point line and then push the, the scores to our, to our help. Yeah, so that, that's Flint United. I don't see us having a problem with that game. Um, you know, sometimes teams, and I'm not saying we're going to do this, but as we mentioned, we are already the number one seed. Yes. So sometimes comfort can slip in at the end of a well, season. Well, you know, it's not comfort because we're still trying to fight for Eastern Conference okay. home court advantage, being the gotcha. number one seed. So yeah. that right there is still in the play. We, Good. We still, we still have a chance no to, comfort, to be to be the uh, have home court advantage throughout the whole uh, first half of the play. Which, as we mentioned, the home court in Kokomo is so oh. different than any other home court, oh. honestly, in the TBL that that's a really important thing to win out. Yeah, because we can go to a, a away game and still feel like we're at home because our fans travel with us. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. All right, so that is uh, Friday night's game against Flint United. And the last game of the season is Sunday, June 27th, against the Owensboro Thoroughbreds. Once again, I said we're 2-1 and one on them on the season, the, that loss coming from last week. So what did we learn from last weekend um, that we can correct? I know we talked a little bit about they just played a perfect game, and sometimes that's tough to beat. Um, but what are some notes going into Sunday's game? Well, the notes is, is understanding who the scores are. Uh, 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 Davenport's a score. And we let him get going. We, we can't let him get going. Uh, Javon Eves, he's a, he's a shooter. He's just a flat-out shooter. He's like a hawk. Uh, we have to make sure that we deny him the ball. Don't let him get the ball. Got to watch him and like then, a hawk. And then when he gets the ball, we got to make him uncomfortable. 
and their point guard, um, none, he played a phenomenal game. But he is a turnover-prone point guard, and we have to make sure we can continue to force him into turnovers. But when we get the turnover, we've got to capitalize on those. Love that. So hopefully we can walk away, finish the season off with two more wins. Um, and it's also, we've got a theme going on this weekend for the games. Oh, yeah. we got it's, we, it's 60s and 70s night yeah, themed yeah. at the Bobcats games, which that should be fun. You got some, some Afro yeah, going on. Afro puffs on. Hey. Love that. Nice. So that'll be fun. I, hopefully maybe next, because I know this season's been crazy. It's the first season. But maybe next season, more of those themed weekends and stuff like that. Because that the fans really love that, you know, and they, they know about it. They can dress up and be there in advance. And that could be fun too. Well, you know what, and, and that's the whole thing. Is this is first year we're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. And those things work. Those yeah. those those those, those uh, nights when when the fans are really involved, or we bring them into the whole uh, uh, weekend or the night, they really enjoy that. And our players, our characters, and they love this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they are something else. No, the the Jackrabbits do that really well too in town. They've always got some fun. Uh, themed weekend games in Kokomo too, and the people do love that in Kokomo. Awesome. So let's start. Let's talk playoffs. You know, so they're right around right. the corner, and a lot of times, or I'm noticing a lot of people don't know how the TBL playoff works, and I, I guess I've kind of learned it. So there's four teams from each um, division that make the playoffs. Correct. The top four teams total. 16 obviously, teams. 16, 16 teams, teams, teams total. Uh, the number one seed obviously plays the four. The two and three play each other, and how it works. The top seed as at home for the second and third game. Right. So, you, yeah, you go on the road. The, the, the top seed goes on the road to start off. The first game. Yeah. The first game. And then it's so, a best of three. And the best of three, yes. Yeah, so as of right now, actually, I think it's pretty locked in at this point. Obviously, we're the number one seed. And like I said, we'll be playing those Columbus Condors. Uh, the first game will obviously be in Columbus and Ohio. And then two and three, if needed, probably won't be. We'll, well sweep I'm, them. Well, well, I'm trying to get these guys to focus in because we play Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. It's except a grind. For, except for this weekend, we're going to play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. But Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, that means no days off. Yeah. So guys have to create their days, and how they create their days is when and two, we get a day off. Yeah. It's a reward it's of reward. sweeping. Yeah. Well, reward of sweeping, and plus, like I said, you give your, chance, uh, your body a chance to rest before the next series. Sure. Yeah. So, so the, sooner you, the sooner you get done with it, the more time you have to rest. Yeah. And we, we were talking a little bit before the recording because we're, we're going to have to stop doing that, by the way, because we need to talk on mic recording <laughs> as much as possible. Yeah. But tell us, I mean, you you love playoffs, you know, and you were you're talking about before a lot of these uh, players, they haven't played in a professional style playoff where you're playing the same team multiple times in a row and how big of a difference that is. You know, a lot of these last playoffs they might have played in was in a college playoff and it's one and done. You lose, you're done. This, you could lose game one and you got to play that same team the next week, the next game, the next game. And that makes a big difference. Well, you know, like, like we have a very young team. I, I think we have maybe one guy who's played professional. So these guys aren't used to focusing in on just one team for a whole week and that's all you're going to play. So you have to um, watch the team, then you got to watch the individual player. You got to watch the plays, how they're getting into their plays. So it's a big difference in preparation. Yeah. And a lot of these guys aren't used to that, just sitting down and watching one guy where he's at the whole time on the floor. You're usually watching the game and you're watching the flow of the thing. But playoffs is a total different beast. You have to focus in on who one you're who, yeah. who you're going to be guarding. Yeah, it's not you're not just watching a whole team. You're watching that one person you're going to be responsible for on both sides of the court. And you you may see him three games in a row. So that means you have to be ready and locked in yeah. all the time. And like we were talking about um before we recorded, you know, I mean if you don't know this by now, you had a professional career yourself. I, I played a time or two. A little bit. A little bit of basketball. A little bit of basketball. Michael Jordan was lucky enough to play with you. That's how I'm going to start saying this. Uh -huh. He was lucky to play with you. You weren't, you know, he was okay. But really, he was lucky to play with you. Um, and I remember growing up, I watched the Bulls and the Pacers seven game series <laughs> and I watched MJ and Reggie go at it night after night after night. And there really is nothing like that, that type of playoff setting. It's completely different than just a one and done. Well, the intensity is so high because you may have gotten the best of me this game. I got you, you know? again. So though. next game I'm looking at, I got to find a way to get the best of you. Yeah. I got to find what I didn't do that. I could have done better this game. 
Now you have a chance to correct that that wrong. And most of the time, it happens like that. You know, you go on the road, you may not have played well, you may not have slept well, whatever. Now you come back home, you got a chance to avenge that that yeah. loss or or if you won, you're trying to see what can I do to expand so I can make sure I keep my dominance on that player. Yeah. It, it's 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 intense. It's chess, it's, man. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. really is. It's oh, it's, it's an art checkers. form. It's not of... the checkers. It's not quick. It's going to be the long. Exactly. Long. Yeah. And you got you really got to think about it. Um, but no, that's exciting. It's going to be exciting to have a first playoff game at uh, Memorial Gym and here in downtown Kokomo. The crowds have been awesome for the season, and I'm guessing they're going to come up for the playoffs, and it's well, going to be I, all I can all I can say is. If you haven't been to a Kokomo Bobcats game, you need to be out there this weekend to experience what's going to be like in the playoffs. Because the playoffs, I want to be insane. Yeah, we want guy, everyone hanging from the rafters at uh, at Memorial Gym. So, I, I, I I'm, I'm looking forward to this week. I like I said, I, you don't know how excited I am <laughs> because I know the fan support we're going to get and and everything yeah. we are. Are, are, are about to do so uh, like i said I, i'm just excited i want people to come out and, and experience what professional basketball is yeah in kokomo you don't have to drive all the way to indianapolis don't don't go there yeah. come right here to kokomo sure absolutely so this weekend like i said friday and sunday last two games of the regular season uh you know so come out and support them let's finish the season off strong two wins and then we're coming up to the playoffs and we're going to be a number one seed in our first year in the tbl so it's a great thing oh, coach thank you for doing oh, this wait, first wait, wait. episode you know what though I, I have to taste all these. I know that's what we're gonna get to table before we even. So Sean off. from Cooks, he oh. delivered a. Oh. a I mean, there's no oh other word. Gosh. It's a feast. It's and I've got a list here. To eat. <laughs> I've got a list here of what's all involved. So uh, this is the Irish egg rolls. Is what this is. So there's corned beef, Irish. there's cabbage, and that's like their Reuben ketchup. I believe with a white cheddar sauce. And then we've got a traditional Reuben here with a side of red uh, cabbage. You're a foodie, right? You like yeah, to cook. I, I, I do cook. I like yeah, to cook. I yeah. like to eat. So this is, this, is, this is McDougal balls, which that's like their classic dish here. Uh, laugh all you want at that one. Uh, we have a uh, plastered chicken, which is a chicken breast with bacon and cheese and I think some sort of sauce bacon on that as well. Make it, make it great. Make it, make it great. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's a God. fan of bacon, people. <laughs> yeah, so lots of great food here at Cook McDougal's. It's right on the square in downtown Kokomo. If you haven't been here, here, please come out and check this awesome local small business. What do you think of the Irish egg rolls? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. That's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I, this is, oh like I said, our office is right down the street. I come here quite a bit, oh. you know, for lunch and oh. all of those. They've also got an awesome outdoor patio if you want to sit outside and eat lunch or dinner. Um, it's a great option for that, too. So make sure to come check out Cook McDougal's. Cook Thank McDougal's, you to Cook McDougal's. Chris, Chris. Uh, oh. <laughs> Thanks for having us uh, for this podcast. That's going to be exciting to film here as much as possible. They're telling me I need to try something too. So right. what do you think I should try? A ball? A ball. I'm trying a ball on the internet. Here we go. I'm going to dip it. Uh, I'm going to dip it in the white cheddar. Yeah. That's good. If you guys never had these, I'm talking with food in my mouth. It's, it's a fried mashed potato ball. It's uh, delicious with the white cheddar sauce. Same sauce on the Irish egg rolls. Come check out Cooping Dougals. Awesome local restaurant. They've been here a long time, actually. I'll say this, and I'll give them props. They were, When Kokomo's downtown really started revitalizing, they were the first restaurant to really set up shop and join the risk of revitalizing downtown. And it's paid off well. So, I mean, it's great to have them downtown. It's, it's become, like, one of your favorite spots. I know the team coming here is quite a bit. Team comes here. I mean... Guys love coming here because the food is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, wow, I'm smacking in the mic. <laughs> so well, I can't help it because this is good. Yeah, sorry this to people good. maybe listen to the audio-only version of this. You're just hearing two guys eat some food. But awesome. Well, that thanks, Cooks, for having us. Uh, thank you for watching the first episode of the Kokomo Bobcast here. Um, I don't know where you're watching. Maybe Facebook, YouTube. Maybe you listen to it on Apple Podcasts or maybe Spotify. But thank you for doing this. We're going to be doing this every week for a while. I don't know what we're going to do off season, but thanks coach. It was a pleasure. Good to be here. Pleasure, like I said, I got two podcasts going on in Kokomo with the two most important men in Kokomo. So <laughs> I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.